Hello guys and girls, welcome back to this new video. This time we have got something different. So I've been working at this festival, um, I do this festival every year actually, and I work uh, most of the time, actually always, uh, yeah I think because the first few times I was, I was a modern engineer, but after I decided it was uh, a bad um, things for me to work as a um, as a patch engineer, just because I like it to do it, to be honest, uh, it's fun, it makes my mind always like busy, um, and yeah, so basically what you can see here, this is my position, I've got my laptop, and I've got another screen when I've got all the patch of the other band, that's Garrett, our monitor engineer for this, this festival, um, and yeah, so I've got, as you can see, different spreadsheet and different stage plot of different band, and in here I prepare all my, uh, basically, all my stage box that I'm gonna use for a band by band. Um, it makes it easier for me where I'm gonna position them, positioning them on the stage. Um, so yeah, so at this moment, as you can see, I'm just gonna go on the center of the stage, take the old stage box, unplug all the cable, and after that, I'm gonna plug the new one that I already prepped before, um, and I'm gonna patch the new channel uh, that I will need to patch basically um and yeah so i'm gonna do that for the rest of the stage as you can see so i'm gonna go down do another one and plug all the cable and uh, so basically this is during the changeover most of the time we have got 45 minutes uh, i'm able to do days in around 20 minutes if i'm by myself especially if the monitor engineer is busy to do other stuff uh, i will need to do by myself um, and yeah so this is basically most of the time you need to be ready for it you need to be prepped for it you need to have everything ready that's the patch so at the moment what i'm gonna do i'm taking all the all the patch that we did before uh, channel by channel take it off, make ready for the next one. Uh, basically each color is gonna go for one input um, and it depends how I've divided that on the spreadsheet. Um, so yeah, basically that's what most of the time I do. Um, uh, I prep the job, the, the next band, sorry. So I check the input list, go on my spreadsheet, put everything on spreadsheet and after that I say, okay, these musician is on stage left okay so I'm gonna, I need to put this stage box on stage left and blah 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 so it depends what, what I'm gonna do so now and also now the next things like I know that I need three vocal mic right so I'm gonna use this vocal mic that's already here make sure that the cable is in the right place plug them and yeah that's it a lot of water on here I mean not a lot but a bit of water is always a bit not uh, good but yeah Plug that, I know which one it is, vocal number one, yeah, vocal number three, I think vocal number one, going from left to right. Um, yeah, I'm gonna position the, the next vocal mic, uh, actually, this was a mic that we used for a sax, um, so I left on the center of the stage because I didn't know where was the position, until I remember that was on this side with, uh, with the percussion mic. That as you will see later, I will end up to don't use it. Um, so yeah, that's basically what most of the time happen. It's not much. It's basically all uh, about be organized, make sure that you have got the right stage plot, to speak with tour manager and production manager before the band goes on stage and make sure that everything is right. Sometimes, unfortunately, it's not possible because I don't get all the information before. So I need to end up to prep everything literally like 10 minutes or 15 minutes before or 20 minutes. Sometimes it happens like 10 minutes because the band is late or something happens. So it depends. But most of the time I'm able to get everything ready for the show um, before the band comes on stage and I've got all the information uh, happening with the, with the advance of the show basically. So yeah, taking all the cabling, all the stuff that's on stage that I know that I'm not gonna use it, um, the eye box and uh, other bits that I don't need. Um, sometimes, especially in this situation when I'm in a rush, I don't have got time to literally cable, yeah, making sure that I cable all the cable in the right way. I just leave what I need on the side, make sure that it looks a bit neat and take the other cable back with me and then when this is the time to do it and I've got more time free, I'm just gonna prep the next one. Um, yeah, basically, that, that's what I do most of the time. Uh, I don't think that I need to do a voiceover from the whole uh, length of the video. Uh, I might gonna stop when I think there's the right moment I'm gonna say something, but for the moment, yeah, enjoy the video if you, if you like it. 
centre of a kettle lead and a, and a jack lead. Yeah. So yeah, basically here what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna unplug the last couple of things um, that I forgot basically to plug uh, the SPD for the drum. I just remember last minute, but it's always good to remember. I always double check before that I um, patch basically the new patch into the stage box. Uh, had a couple of cable that I need to use it and make sure that I need the five meters. So I went back, I forgot to grab a cable with me, go back. <laughs> and uh, patch everything here again make sure that this is linked put the cable on the right side patch that in uh, and i think this is now the time to go back to the stage box yeah unfortunately i didn't have got enough time and space actually because like, the other band that was headlining was quite taking quite a lot of space so yeah basically i take all the yellow stuff go on my patch check on my patch where i need to patch the the yellow stage box and I'm going to do number by number and patch them on the right channel, make sure that is correct. Uh, and basically, yeah, that's for the 24 or 25 channel that I need to do it. So basically, what normally happen is the the we have got massive um, input list that we make for the whole festival. So basically, a couple of days uh, before the festival start, what I do, I check all the input list of each band and I make a massive input list that we're gonna use for the festival so basically that's the patch, patch festival and I'm gonna plug each band that's coming on stage on the festival patch uh, so basically let's say that we have got drum from 1 to 12 it can happen that the next band that's gonna play has got drum from 1 to 8 so I'm gonna do kick in on number one, kick out to number two, snare top, snare on number four, but basically let's say they have got like Tom one, two and three on the on the festival patch, but then Ben is playing, I've got just Tom uh, floor Tom one and two, so I'm gonna just plug one and two, and that's basically what I'm doing, I'm plugging each channel that the band has got on the right input list of the festival patch. Um, no, so basically I've built a good spreadsheet that helped me to do quite a lot um, helped me also with uh, how I created the little stage box that you can see on the side um, yeah and every time every time there's always a change that I do because I get oh you know what I'm gonna add these like now I've got the opportunity to know how many mic stand each band use or how many di box or how many mic I've got so I put more information information so it makes my life easier when I've got not a lot of time to prep everything I need to do it. Um, so yeah, basically that's that's what I'm doing. I'm patching the last channel to make sure that everything works. I think that during this show we had also a problem uh, with uh, with our stage box at some point. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna leave you watch the video and 
see you later.
So basically, uh, at some point during this new change of um, of, of stage, uh, we had a problem, <laughs> strange enough, with our talkback. Um, we don't know, understand why, but we could use this all day with the other band, um, but um, we couldn't use this with the, with this new band. It was on stage, so I took out my stage uh, my sound bullet to try to troubleshoot the problem, check if it was at first the cable. So I said, okay, let's go straight here. And I said, oh, no, we couldn't hear anything. We couldn't do, we couldn't see anything. I, I, I always forget how. <laughs> um, you know that the sound bullet is sending something. Uh, I mean, I should make that work. Uh, remember what was the right lights and what was the right button to play. Uh, sometimes, you, literally, my mind it goes like, oh, I don't remember quite a lot of stuff, but everything was was okay. We test everything. Nothing was working. And as you can see during the video at the end, um, I went to check literally straight. I said, okay, let's go straight to the stage box and uh, let's see if maybe it's the stage box. No. Basically, I did that, tried that, unplugged the right channel, put the right channel inside, checked that this was working just to make sure that I would get any signal. I just like double check, three double check most of the time that everything is okay. So I said, okay, let's try. Put that in, nothing. We got the same problem, nothing was happening, okay. Um, at the end, after a long troubleshooting, I had that so many things to do. I said, okay, let me try another cable. I went to try a cable anyway long long stuff uh, a lot of troubleshooting and we realized because I said okay maybe it's the, uh, it's, um, it's the cable or something like that I don't know let me try in a different way and yeah actually no on here what I'm doing I remember now what's the problem so basically the the sound bullet couldn't fit between the the two XLR that were on the patch so I said, okay, let me try to put a cable in and let me see if it works, if they get anything. Same problem, nothing was happening. So I said, okay, well, I don't know what to say. I need to do all kind of stuff. So, because I was busy to finish the other stuff. They said, okay, look, I'll leave this to you. Let me see if we can find a solution. But I said, okay, well, if the sound bullet maybe doesn't work, maybe something is wrong with my sound bullet. I don't think so, because I tried that before. Anyway, I said, let me grab a SM58. Let me try it with the mic. Right, because I always like, so let, let's try, let's double try, let's put everything back as it was. And uh, let's go straight back as we were doing before, trying from the patch. And anyway, we did a lot of testing, a lot of troubleshooting. In the end, the only problem was that the show file was uh, recalled from the desk in front of us. It was not in 96K. Uh, it was, I think it was 48, so we changed that and basically worked. So basically you will hear on a sound point, I say, oh, what was the problem? Oh, it was 48, but we need to be 96. I think that that's the problem. Me and Gareth trying to find a solution. He said, well, let me check that. Let's open the rack. Let's see if something is happening in the rack. I said, okay, let's try, let, let's try to open the rack. Let's see if the cable is patched. Let's say, and we, we asking them, look, 
try to send the phantom power, try to send something, let's see if we can see any lights. Anyway, at the end, it was just like, uh, a, I think, a user error that, would, it, that didn't change the from 96 to 48 or 48, 96. I don't remember, to be honest, now on top of my head. But yeah, problem sorted, kicks went, went um, we didn't have any problem. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
the show boy. We have to have to go down that line and Nine or 
10 laps after those, so yeah. three, they Cool. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. 